Hello and welcome to Glamador's Dungeon Fighter Sprite Edit Video Tutorials Chapter 1. The Dungeon Fighter Extractor and Extractor Basics. The first thing you're going to want to do before you start your modding is to get the Dungeon and Fighter Extractor or DNF Extractor or DNFE for short. Now there's a handy thread on the Dungeon Fighter source forums where you can get all the info you need as well as links for download and how to install the DNF extractor. Now once you've got it, it'll come in a zip file with an installation exe which you'll install and a language pack 1033.ini. Now in order to install the language pack which will change all of the Korean text into English hopefully, you want to go into your program files and locate extractor.net.cn it's a folder. And in your language folder, under DNF Extractor, you'll find 1033, or not. Uh, you're going to have to put it there. You just get it from your Extractor Suite and move it right in there. Not hard. Now, once you've got it installed and the language, pla language pack in place, you just open up the Dungeon Inviter Extractor, and it will open up a window that looks like this. Now, what you're going to want to do from here is familiarize yourself with all of the buttons and gizmos that this thing lets you do. To start with, you want to log in with an account. There is an account that DFO Source has come up with, which is free for all of us to use. The login is DFO Source, and the password is fuckfuck. Fuck. Yes, mature people. Anyways, in order to open up a file, from Dungeon and Fighter, you're going to want to go to your computer, your C drive, and in there you'll find a folder called Nexon, which contains a folder called DFO, which contains two folders called Image Packs 2 and Image Packs 3. Image Packs 3 we'll get to a little bit later, but for now we're going to worry about Image Packs 2. This is where all of Dungeon Fighter's NPK packages are stored. NPKs, I don't know what it stands for, are just collections of images and coordinates and instructions for the game to play them in a specific order. So all we're going to be doing when we edit one of these things is to locate the one which contains the effect we're looking to edit and click on it in the extractor. Now today we're going to edit the Thief's Dark Soul. Once you've got that selected it uh, pops up up here under data file to be analyzed and you just hit Analyze File. Now you'll notice you'll get a bunch of images on the left. It's called a .img, or image file. Now inside each image file is contained a number of ping files, .png. Uh, the number of files in each package varies from sprite to sprite. This one has eight, this one has six, this one has seven. Now Dungeon Fighter only recognizes those same number of files. It's, it's, it's indexed from 0 to whatever the number is, so if it says 8, there's actually 9 files in there. In order to replace a sprite, you need to have exactly that same number of files, otherwise DFO will not recognize that there's a sprite there. If you go beyond that to 9 or 10 or 11 uh, by methods that I'll show you later, Dungeon and Fighter will not see that those exist. It will only look to run to play file 0 through 8. So the important thing here is to recognize the order that the files come in and the position that they have on screen. Now, Dungeon Fighter Extractor has some handy features which allow you to more accurately view how the sprite will behave when you actually get it in game. Now when you first open it up, this little box down here called actual coordinates is not going to be checked. You want to check that because that will make it so that the sprites that you're going to view show up on screen. You can move it around but that doesn't actually do anything. It only makes it easier for you to see the sprite. It doesn't change anything in game, just moving it around the screen. If you want to see your sprites in action, then you click on this little box up here, Animation Display Frame. That will cause it to play in the same position as it would be in game. If you uncheck this little actual coordinates box, it will jump to the far left and far upper corner. Um, 
This one must have a few stray pixels up here, which is causing it to jump down like that. But if you hit actual coordinates, that's a better idea of how it's all going to play out in game, especially in reference to other files. Now, if you keep this animation frame checked, you can look all the way down through the different dot images on the left here and see how the different parts of the animation play. You'll see that even in something as simple as Dark Soul, which is just a little ball that floats across the screen, it has a whole lot of different effects with different number of frames playing in different loops with uh, different layers to the animation. Some of them are light, some of them are dark, some of them will show up, some of them you'll barely be able to see, but they all look opaque in the extractor. For now, I'm just going to try and recolor the image just to show you how things work. Now, one of the things you can do here is look at each ping file individually and you can right click and you get a whole list of things that you can do. The one that we're going to deal with now is extract picture and replacement map. We'll get to the rest later. If you extract the picture, it will go to whatever you have listed up here, your output directory. Mine is on my desktop in a folder called NPK Extractions. Now, if you open up your Extractions folder, you'll notice that there is a whole bunch of new folders for every sprite that you extract. Now, we went into Thief Effect Dark Soul.npk, and you'll notice that there is a folder for everything that you decide to extract pops up for each image. Now inside each of these folders is the actual ping that you extracted. Now doing it one by one is extremely tedious and you should never do that. When you find the dot image that you want and you want to edit the files, go ahead and hit this Save All Picks button in the upper right hand corner. You'll see that puts all of them in that one folder. We have six frames to work with, all of them in order as they were in the NPK. Now, say we want to edit these and then replace it with something else. Now, I'm going to open this up, actually, in something called paint.net because it's free and not everyone has access to Photoshop. I was able to get a copy through the school that I went to, so that's how I got mine. But you are going to have to use something like paint.net. It's a very effective, almost as good as Photoshop tool. What you're going to want to do is open up an image, open, and say you want to adjust the hue. You want to go to adjustments, hue saturation, and then you can adjust up and down. For now I think I'm going to make it green. So that's hue plus 124. Saturation 0, lightness 0. But I'll get into the uh, fancier effects for use in Photoshop and Paint.net later. For now, we're just trying to figure out how the extractor works and what you can do with some of the sprites. Now, let's go ahead and open up the rest of these and run the same thing. Hue saturation, OK. Hue saturation, OK. Hue saturation, OK. I specifically chose a file with a small number of frames so that this wouldn't take too long. Now, later on I'll explain how to do batches, which is editing entire folders at once using Photoshop. I don't know how to do that in Paint.net, but for now this will work just fine. These are just save details, nothing to worry about. You want to try and save in 32-bit because that's the highest the DFO will accept and the highest that you can get on a ping. Uh, Auto-detect sometimes screws up both in DFO and paint.net, so try not to use it. All right, now all of our six files are now green. Now a couple of ways we can do this. There are two ways we can organize this. If you have files named something, I could go in and right-click on frame 5, or the 6th frame in the list, and hit Replacement. Now this brings up another window, which you're going to want to click 32, because again, if you use original color, sometimes DFO or the DNF extractor will screw up 
and it will look sort of hazy or pixely or discolored and we don't want that so just always click on that 32 to be safe and for now we're going to modify the currently selected resource don't don't worry about that five resources thing over there that's nothing it's just the one that we right clicked on we're going to click this little dot 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 and then locate wherever you put it I put it on desktop NPK extractions thief effect dark soul charge soul normal and we're going to select number five now that's loaded up and you hit identified operation completed and now you'll see that in DFO or the DNF extractor the dark soul frame 5 appears green now for completeness sake we could again modify it and pick a different frame if we wanted to reverse the order of animation we could load from 5 to 0 anything you click on it will replace but that's not the case in this next method that I'm going to show you. In replacement map, if you click on modify all resources, 32 again, now it will ask you to select a directory in NPK extractions, dark soul, charge soul, identified. Same as before, except that we click this modify all resources. Now you'll notice that all of the pictures in the folder, the ping files, are in the folder now. But watch what happens if I say rename this to J. Now if we try to modify all resources using the same folder, we come back with an error. That is because when using the replace all files option, you must have all of the files in your folder named as they are in the DF, DNF extractor in the same order that you want them to be replaced in. Now say you wanted to reverse the order, like I said before, you could rename this 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It would put them in in that order. But for now we're just going to make it green because that looks cool. Now in the past we've had to adjust the file size up here on the left. You'll see the red, let the red numbers and letters. Now that means that the file size is larger than we started out with, which in the past was a big problem for sprite modders because we had to try and keep all of our files contained in these strict restrictions. But you modern sprite modders have it a lot easier than we did in the past because with the rebirth update, we have discovered that we can rename NPKs to affect a change in the sprites without replacing them, which is just a huge boon to anyone looking to modify. So for now, we can completely ignore these numbers. We didn't used to, but now just hit exit. Yes. Now what you're wanna, gonna wanna do is go into your C Nexon DFO Image Packs 2 and locate that file that we modified. which is Thief Effect Dark Soul. Now, I forgot to do what you're supposed to do now because I'm used to doing it the old way, but it doesn't matter. What you're going to do is rename the file that you've changed to whatever it was with a 2 at the end. Waiting. Ah. Well, ignore my computer. It renames it to 2, and then DFO, when it boots up, will recognize that there is a file missing and replace that file, but it will do nothing to Dark Soul 2. And what happens is that Dark Soul 2 will replace whatever sprite was in Dark Soul without the 2 when it shows up in game. It'll be green. And I can show you a video showing you what that looks like as a video response to this one. But for now, our work is done. We've replaced it. It will work. And I'll show you that later. But say you don't want to re-download the file because that just wastes bandwidth and it's pointless. If we wanted to modify Darknail, for instance, before we start, we copy the, fo the file and rename it before we start to Darknail 2. 
now when we open up the extractor we can either select it over here or since most of the file name is correct I'm just going to type it in manually darknail2.npk and we edit this as usual change whatever we like and then close it and our work is done no need to worry about file sizes or anything and that's pretty much it for my explanation of the DNF extractor basics I'll get into some of the more complicated stuff when we deal with more than simple recolorations and get into something like oh I don't know replacing a summon with another one I've got a few of those so I can show you that pretty easily still green next video I will get into some more complicated things like hiding maps or modifying texture resources or creating an animated GIF from the frames that you've edited. But for now, I'm signing off. See you in Chapter 2.